I've come into the workshop because I want to make something. The only trouble is, I have no idea what I want to make. This is not like me. I'm normally the guy that has all the ideas. People come to me for ideas, but today I'm totally lost. And now I'm bored and distracted. Normally, when I hit a creative block, I scan through my old designs. I check out social media, but today, it's just not happening. I sit there, stuck and desperate, trying to force ideas from my mind onto the paper. But all this does is make me feel even more hopeless. In desperation, I turn to a pile of scrap wood. But even that just laughs at me and mocks me. Feeling totally fed up and useless, this is the point where I'd pull my hair out. If I had any, that is. I tried watching my favourite YouTube channels, but instead of being inspired, I just feel stuck. It's like everyone else is brimming with ideas and I'm sitting here with just a blank pitch. Welcome to Steve Bell Creates. This video is kindly sponsored by PCBWare. And then, just when I was ready to pack everything in, I saw it. Something that I'd been ignoring. Nothing fancy, just an old piece of reclaimed pine. And I thought, maybe this thing doesn't need to be complicated. Just make something, Steve, and go from there. I know this doesn't look much, but it's got me excited. I came up with an idea to turn this old pine shelf into another pine shelf. At this moment in time, I'm not too sure how this will turn out. But I don't really care. I'm making something and I'm happy. I remembered a conversation I had with my good friend and fellow podcast host, Pierre the Swedish Maker. We talked about how to use the laser more creatively, and that's given me the beginning of an idea. An idea to use the laser to add decorative elements to wood. So for my rough, hastily drawn, not so good sketch, we now have something that I feel is quite good. And like a lot of my projects, I messed up first time. But I'm not really that bothered. I'm not seeking perfection here. I'm just wanting to make something. I'm excited now and I'm enjoying myself. And I've gone from having no ideas to having lots of ideas flowing around my mind. I'm not too sure where they're gonna take me or where they're gonna take this project. So I've finished my little shelf, and it's not the best shelf, and I'm not too sure that I'm going to use it for anything, but it's inspired me to greater things. And I can't believe that I've gone from having no ideas to having some great ideas in no time at all. I've taken some of the design elements from the little shelf, and I'm going to use them to make some hall storage. Somewhere to hang your hats and your coats and your scarves. I find it strange really that while I'm marking out these pieces of wood, only a few short hours ago I was desperate, fed up and yeah, miserable. And now I'm really enjoying myself and I'd almost say I'm in some sort of state of flow. My whole body language and mindset has totally changed. I'm cutting up these pieces of ash at the table saw to make a panel. Using the world's largest bottle of glue in the process. It's really nice to have a simple glue up for a change, 
No real stress with this one. I really find it interesting how our moods and mindsets change and how just one small spark can totally transform them. I'm going to use the laser again to put the decorative design on this ash. And no, don't worry, you don't have to watch the whole engraving process. I got myself a nice little production line going, and whilst one piece was being engraved, I could work on the previous piece. The engraving came out really well. The line is there to cut with a bandsaw and the circle is for a hook or a knob. For the hooks I decided to print some on my 3D printer. They look more like knobs but they'll work well to hang your coats and your scarves and your hats on. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Now I know what you're thinking Steve, I haven't got a 3D printer. Well don't worry because the sponsor of today's video PCBWare is just what you need. PCBWare have a great, easy to use website. Not only are they famous for manufacturing and prototyping PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. How cool is that? If you want something 3D printing, it's really easy. You just upload your file to the website, choose your materials and other options, they'll make it for you and deliver it to your door. And I've left a link to their website in the description. Thanks PCBWare. I use the bandsaw to cut just outside the lasered line. I also made a template with the laser that I can use with the flush trim bit in the router. And I never really believed in double sided tape, but now I'd never be without it. I use the router in my mini homemade router table. The router table worked really well. The only downside was the flush trim bit. I've used this loads lately and it was really quite dull. I'd ordered a new one but it wasn't coming for a couple of days. So I persevered and it just the same made it. This is a set of router bits that are over 30 years old. I remembered I had this particular bit. I'm not sure what you call it, but it cuts this slot, which you can use to hang things on the walls. To cut the slot, I made a jig. It's got a fence that the router fence can ride against, a block to hold the wood in place, and a stop block at the end. The idea being the router rides against the fence, it's got a pencil mark where to start and it'll stop when it reaches the stop at the end, funnily enough. What could possibly go wrong with a 30 year old router bit? Well, 
nothing went wrong really. It worked really good. A little bit of smoke and a little bit of burn, but I was really pleased that it still works. I don't know whether it's because of all the doubts and frustrations I had earlier, but this is some of the most fun I've had in the workshop in a long time. I sanded through all the grits up to 240 and these things were so smooth. They felt like really nice shiny pebbles from a beach. I found the best way to clean out all the dust and debris from the grooves was with my wife's toothbrush. No, seriously, do you think I'm that stupid? It's just a toothbrush from the workshop. I'd almost forgotten about this piece. This is going to form a shelf above the hanging pegs. It goes through the same process as the other pieces, only on a bigger scale. And then it gets cut down to size using the table saw and the band saw. Look at the concentration on my face. Using another template cut on a laser, it was time to flush trim this piece. As the new router bit hadn't arrived, I broke out my big half inch router with a flush trim bit and it made such short work of this. In order to cut the hangers on the back, I changed the jig. I put a larger fence and still had the stop lock and the little fence on the side for the router to run against. And whether it's because I'm getting to the end of the project, I was slightly more nervous cutting this one for some reason. To cut the corresponding slot, I simply changed the fence on the jig to the other side. I'm in the homeward stretch now. With just one last piece of wood to cut, that forms the shelf. And as I'm making this final piece, I remind myself that creativity isn't always about grand designs or ambitious projects. Sometimes it's the simple things that get you started and mean more. Sometimes it's just about letting yourself go, trying something different and getting lost in the process. And if you, like me, find yourself stuck, think simple. Just pick up something and start. I can honestly say that this is one of the nicest things I've built in a long time. I've had so much fun making it, and I felt so content making it. Once I got started, of course. So before we get to the beauty shots, thanks so much for watching. And thanks for putting up with me today. I know I wasn't at my best when we started, but I'm at my best now. So cheers. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.